Halloween is becoming a global phenomenon, not because of its supernatural popularity or religious and pagan tones, but because it's simply fun. No one really believes in the silly nonsense of ghosts, witches and vampires anymore. Or do they? Hello, I'm Alex, and this is the English and Ear channel, where we look into what people say in English and why they say it. This week, as you no doubt already guessed from the title, we're looking into vocabulary and the origins of Halloween. Halloween, so the legend goes, finds its origins in the old Celtic or Celtic festival of Sarwin when people used to celebrate the final harvest at the end of summer. They would light bonfires and dress up in costumes in order to scare away the dark spirits. The Catholic Church under Pope Gregory III in the 8th century decided that November the 1st would be the day to honour all the saints. So what did he call this day? You got it. All Saints Day or All Hallows Day, where hallowed means holy. Think of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. The night before All Hallows Day is All Hallows Eve, where Eve means the day or the period of time before an event. You see where this is going? All Hallows Eve became, over time, Halloween. And many academics suggest that people would keep a vigil or stay awake through the night. That's where we get the word vigilant from. Or keep a lookout for uh, anything going wrong. Over time, this evolved into the mix of Celtic and Christian traditions. And particularly in the USA, became quite the occasion with the kids. And even the grown-up kids. There are a number of words that we associate with Halloween, and I thought we would see where they come from. Trick or treat. Let's start off with the most common tradition, the trick or treating. There are a number of theories as to where this activity started. One was that in Scotland, the poor would go around asking for money in exchange for prayers at this time on All Souls Day. All Souls Day is one day after All Saints Day. Nowadays, children go around dressed in scary costumes, knocking on doors and shouting trick or treat. Most people are prepared and have a jar of sweets or candies or even some special treats to hand over to these little monsters. In 19th century America, however, if you failed to deliver these sugary delights, the kids would play a trick on you. And there's kids like teenagers. These included things like tying a rope across a path to trip you up, tying your door to a tree so that you couldn't open it. On one occasion, these children spread molasses or a sweet syrup on all the seats in the church. Another time, boys would throw flour at well-dressed people in the streets. This Halloween problem got so bad to the point where in big cities, bands of boys would throw bricks through windows. They would vandalize homes and let air out of people's tires. People had had enough and there was a movement started to cancel Halloween altogether. Luckily, these little trick-or-treats were taken over by younger and more innocent children who just yelled out, trick-or-treat, but they had no way to really carry out these threats. Pumpkin. This word probably comes from the Latin melopepon, meaning a gourd apple, and may also be the origin of the word melon. Jack-o'-lantern. The jack-o'-lantern is famously a pumpkin with a scary face carved into it, and perhaps a candle or a light inside it to illuminate it. But where did the name come from? Well, they think it probably came from 17th century England and referred to a mysterious ghostly light 
seen by travellers, usually as they were passing near marshland or some bogs. Science has explained this as a chemical reaction of natural gases, a kind of bioluminescence, I suppose. The name Jack was just another word for a worker or a labourer, and we see this in expressions like lumberjack or a jack-in-the-box, and my favourite, a jack-of-all-trades and master of none. Which? This comes from the old English Wicca, the female version of a magician or a sorcerer and a healer. We don't hear about it so often, but across Europe during the time of great persecution of witches, about 10 or 15 percent of these 6,000 witches who were executed were actually men. Go equality! The pointed black hat that we associate with witches is often attributed to the fact that Jewish women often wore this kind of fashion, and they were often known uh, for their ability with medicine, and were often accused of witchcraft because of it. Spirit. I love this one. We, we all know of a person's soul or spirit. Well, this originated from the Latin word spirari, meaning to breathe. It's literally a person's breath. It's also where we get the words aspire, inspire, expire, and conspire. Broomstick. This mode of transportation has seen a rise in popularity ever since Harry Potter started flying on one to play Quidditch. Broom is a kind of plant that has long branches, which when you join them together and tie them to a stick, they make a broomstick for brushing the floor. Or flying. Strangely, the broomstick was just one of the household objects that witches were supposed to fly on. Others include pitchforks and, strangely, bowls. Cemetery. This derives from the ancient Greek koimaterion, meaning a place to sleep or lie down. They just don't mention how long for. Coffin. This also comes from ancient Greek, kofinos, meaning a basket. And after passing through Latin and French, among others, it came to English to mean a box for storing valuable items, also known as a coffer. And from there to where the dead and Count Dracula sleep. Creepy. Creep literally means to move silently and carefully so that nobody notices you. This also refers to plants that grow slowly and steadily along the floor or up walls. These are known as creeper plants, but also for things that have that sense of unease or discomfort. So you might describe a place that is misty, full of dead trees as creepy. You can also describe a person who makes you feel very uncomfortable as creepy. A creepy crawly is an animal, usually an insect or spider, that walks quietly with its belly close to the floor and makes you scream when you see it. I mean, makes some people scream when they see it. Vampire. The legend of a vampire as an undead creature arose in the area we now know as Bulgaria a thousand years ago. The Slavic word vapir, excuse my pronunciation, from which we get vampire, can be loosely translated as a ghost monster. Originally, they didn't have a physical body. And the theory grew that they needed to suck the blood from innocent victims to regain their corporeal status. The most famous vampire, of course, is Count Dracula from Transylvania, based on Vlad Dracul, the ruler of uh, Wallachia in Romania. Hi, my name is Ron Wayround, and this is Breaking News. The city has been overtaken by monsters, by scary creatures, witches and wizards, skeletons, and for some reason, Power Rangers. No one is safe. Please stay indoors with the doors locked. 
Apparently, the only way to keep these terrifying things away is to feed them sweets or candy. They come to your door and threaten you if you do not give them what they want. Our brave reporter Phil Omonic was out in the streets and was nearly bitten by a strange European aristocratic man with big teeth and a creepy laugh. He managed to stop him and ask what was going on. So, what is going on? I need blood, lots of blood, two liters of blood. Ah, ah, ah! No, three liters of blood. Ah, ah, ah! Then go to the hospital. You do not understand. I must drink the blood of virgins to survive. So why did you try to bite me? Oh, um, back to you, Ron, Ron, Ron. To you, Ron, Ron. Uh, thanks, Phil. Anyway, for more updates, please press the like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more of these videos. And please do write comments in the section below, as it makes me feel I have some friends. I mean, it's important to interact with the viewers. Skeleton. This was the first monster that I remember being really afraid of, and I saw it first on a children's program. It is famously seen on the skull and crossbones flag of a pirate and as the internationally recognized sign for poison. It comes from the old Greek skeleton soma, which means dried body. Werewolf. The meaning of werewolf is quite simple. Were is old English and just means man. So it literally means man wolf. Unfortunately, there is no equivalent for a woman wolf though. Zombie. The idea of the living dead is thought to have started in West Africa with the various languages calling them Zumbis or Jumbis. This tradition was brought over to the Caribbean, particularly Haiti, where the slave drivers on plantations, who were often slaves themselves, discouraged their charges from committing suicide by threatening that they would turn into these zombies, they would be reanimated as these lifeless bodies. Spooky. The word spook means ghost and comes from the Middle Dutch spook. It is most often used uh, a bit like creepy to describe something a little scary, a little mysterious and inexplicable. It's also used to describe or as another word for a spy who are supposed to be hidden away and mysterious. Spider. We usually say that a spider spins its web like a person making thread from wool. Think of Cinderella who pricked her finger on a spinning wheel. Over time, this word evolved from spinner, spinther, spindur, to spider. Why did Dracula break up with his girlfriend after her blood test? Because she wasn't his type. Why doesn't Dracula have many friends? Because he's a pain in the neck. What did Dr. Frankenstein say when his monster spat on him? It's saliva. Sorry about that. Anyway, that's enough for today. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a like or a, th a thumbs up and a subscribe if you feel like it. And hit the uh, little notification bell if you want to be notified when we uh, post a new video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and had a, a little bit of a learning process as well. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.